In this video, we are going to take a look at the new Geometry Mask feature in Substance Painter 2021.1. The Geometry Mask allows you to mask as well as hide geometry based on mesh names or parts. A key factor is that you can now paint on hard to see or obscured areas on the mesh by simply hiding geometry that is in the way. And this method is more optimized than a regular paint mask. The geometry mask will work with the UV tiles workflow and also with individual texture sets. So now let's jump in and take a look at how the geometry mask works. I'm going to come over here to my shelf and I'm going to grab this wood smart material and the left click and just drag and drop this here to the bottom of my stack. So now I have this wood smart material. If we take a look or expand the layer group, we can see here all of the layers that make up this smart material. Now the wood is being applied, but it's also being applied here to the blades. And I actually need to mask this because I don't want the wood to be on the blades. And this is going to be a great use case for the geometry mask. So instead of creating a traditional mask, what I can do is if we take a look here at my layers, all of the layers now have this thumbnail, which allows me to edit the geometry mask in the 2D or the 3D view. I can create a geometry mask on any layer. If I create a geometry mask on the layer group, that mask will propagate to all the layers within the group. I could also create additional masks for layers within this group as well. But in this particular case, I'm just going to create a geometry mask for this root level, uh, which is going to be my layer group. So like I said, I just come over here to the icon. I will click to enter into the geometry mask mode. Here in the properties, you can see that I have a mask type. Now, because this project was created with the UV tile workflow, I have the ability to mask with UV tiles. However, in this case, I want to use the mesh names. So I'm going to switch the mask type to mesh names. Now, here in the properties list, I can see all of the mesh parts that make up this 3D model. And the mesh part names are listed here in this property list. In this property list, I can deactivate as well as reactivate the mesh parts. I can also come over here to my 3D view and just simply click on any of the mesh parts. You can see that as I mouse over each part, it's highlighted. So here I can just left click and that is going to deactivate that part. You can see here it's deactivated in the properties list. Now to reactivate, I just simply left click once more and now you can see that it's been reactivated. Here you can see that we have this number. Now this number indicates all of the mesh parts that are active here. So here you can see that this icon is letting me know that I have 16 mesh parts that are visible. So here I can see 16 out of 17. So in my case, I only have one mesh part that has been deactivated or masked, as we'll say. Now in my 3D view, if I want to deactivate or mask a set of mesh parts, I can hold down the control key left click and drag. You can see that this creates a marquee selection. I have this red box all of the mesh parts that are encompassed in this red marquee, they will then be deactivated. Now, if I want to reactivate, I can left click and drag. And now you can see that I have this blue marquee selection. Again, all of the mesh parts that, in, that are encompassed within this blue selection, they will be reactivated. So that gives you a quick way to mask and unmask mesh parts here in the 3D view. Now, in my case, I want to just mask or deactivate the blades. So I can just come over to my 3D view and just left click. So here we can see that I have now deactivated or masked. Again, we have 16 mesh parts that are going to be visible or active. And now to get back to my layer stack, I can come over here to the layer group icon and just simply click on it. And that is going to exit the geometry mask. Now I am back to my layer stack. And now you can see that we've masked out the blades and I'm ready to start working on building up additional materials. A good way to think about the geometry mask is that the mesh names that are active will be visible. This is like painting a white value in a standard mask. The mesh names that are deactivated will be invisible or transparent in the mask. This is like painting a black value in a standard mask. So with that said, I'm going to jump back over here to my shelf. I'm going to grab this textile smart material. Let's left click and drag and drop. This time I'm going to place this one right above my paint layer. So now I'm adding this textile smart material. As you can see, if I expand the group, we have several 
layers. I could go into each one of these layers and I can create specific geometry mass if I like. However, a quick way to work in this case, I'm just going to mask the group layer itself. Again, that'll act like a global mask. So I can just click here on the geometry mask. I'm going to drop my mask type into mesh names. And now here I have a list of all of the mesh names. So I could come in, like I said, and use the property list or mask or make selections here within my 3D view. However, we have a shortcut that's uh, pretty handy. So let's say, for example, I want just the blades. It's this wing textile. This is the name. So I can hold down the Alt key and just simply left click here on this name of wing textile. And you can see that it will keep the mesh part name enabled and disable all of the other mesh parts. So that's a really quick way of being able to create a mask. You can see here that the geometry mask icon is showing a value of one, meaning that we have one active mesh. This is going to essentially, like I said, have that white value in the mask, and it's going to be what is visible. Now, we also have this option here. We click this drop down. This just gives me another couple of quick shortcuts for doing things like include or exclude all, as well as invert. So let's say that we wanted to quickly invert. We could use invert, and you can see here that this just inverts the mask. Now, that's not what I want, so here I'll just use the Alt key, left click on the wing textile name again, just to set up my mask. Okay, so now that that's in place, I wanna exit out of the geometry mask so I can come over here to the group layer icon, left click, and now I'm back to working in my standard layer stack, and you can see here that I have used the geometry mask to mask the windmill blades as well as created a mask for the wood. Now, before we jump into taking a look at using a paint layer with the geometry mask, I do want to mention that you can actually copy and paste geometry mask data between layers. So if I come over here to the thumbnail and I right click, this context menu is actually getting cut off in the screen capture, but what it says here is copy geometry mask. You can copy the geometry mask and then you can paste into another geometry mask. This lets you, like I said, copy and paste geometry mask data from layer to layer. Also, you have global options for the geometry mask to include or exclude all mesh part names. Okay, so with that said, let me jump up here to the top of my layer stack. I'm gonna create a new layer and we'll call this dirt. And so now I'd like to actually paint some dirt. And I would like to apply this dirt or paint this dirt here on the base. Now I could come in and use a traditional mask, but in this case, I'm gonna use the geometry mask. And the reason for this is because I wanna paint some dirt here on the base. However, the wood walls are really getting in the way. They're obstructing my view. I can't really work very uh, freely here. And so I'm gonna use the geometry mask to help hide this geometry as I paint. So what I'm gonna do is quickly come into the geometry mask. I'm going to set the mask type to mesh names in this case. Now I'm going to use the control key, left click and drag to do an exclusion marquee selection. Now that's actually done the opposite of what I've wanted, but no problem. We can come over here to our drop down and choose invert. So now I've quickly set up my geometry mask. I can see that I have four mesh parts that are visible or active. So I'm gonna come over here to the actual paint layer icon and click so that I can now start to work. We've added a new mode that you can access here towards the top of the 3D view, and it's called Hide Ignore Excluded Geometry. And what this does is it hides geometry that is excluded in the geometry mask. And while this mode is enabled, brush strokes will paint through the geometry. So let's actually demonstrate what that's gonna do. First, I'm gonna come over here to my brushes and I'll do a quick search. Let me just grab a dirt brush. I'll grab dirt two. I'm gonna right click, come over here to my material and why don't I just set up a color here. And then I'm going to enable my roughness channel, make this fairly rough. Okay, so I'm now ready to work. And like I said, uh, the wood paneling here is in my way. No problem, I'm gonna use this new mode. So I'll just left click here to activate or enable this mode. And now you can see that the geometry is uh, basically hidden, it's invisible. Now my uh, view is uh, completely open. I can actually go in and paint exactly where I want. So here you can see I'm going in and painting here very freely in my view. Uh, nothing is in the way, and this is precisely what I wanted to do and why I'm using the geometry mask in this particular case. So depending on your mesh and how it's divided up into mesh parts, the geometry mask can be the best option for you to use when creating a mask. Now we also have a keyboard shortcut for activating and deactivating this mode. So if I hit Alt-H, you can see that it will then show the hidden geometry. Once again, I hit Alt-H and that will hide the geometry. 
Now here you'll notice uh, I'm painting in some strokes. Let's go back and view, I'm using Alt-H to view all the geometry. So one other very specific thing that you need to understand about this geometry mask is that it works non-destructively, which is really cool. So let me show you what I mean by that. Let's jump into the geometry mask. Now you'll notice that the wood paneling has been excluded. So not only did that allow us to hide the geometry in the viewport as we work, but it also excluded the strokes. The strokes I'm basically painting through this hidden geometry to the wood structure underneath. And that's precisely what I wanted. However, let's say that, well, down the road, I decide to re-enable this. So what I'm gonna do is just simply left click here to re-enable. And you'll notice something very interesting. The strokes that I had painted are now reprojected back onto the geometry that is now included in the geometry mask. So the wall planks, we've included them. You can see we now have five visible or active elements. And now the paint strokes now reappear here. So you never actually lose what's happening with the geometry with these paint strokes. Substance Painter's working non-destructively here, which is very interesting. But it's just something to really keep in mind as you start to use this geometry mask. This concludes this video on the geometry mask. The key takeaways are that you can use the geometry mask to hide meshes that obscure your view. Also, you can paint through excluded meshes as a way to mask paint strokes. However, this process is non-destructive, so activating a mesh part will reproject the strokes to the active mesh. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.